we have a very special guest in our midst. Um, oh, you want to celebrate? Please go ahead and do that. Praise God. We believe God has given him a word for this house at this time. It's a man that I always look forward to sharing fellowship with every time that I've spent with him. Uh, private moments. Uh, I've always be, every time has always been very engaging, very enriching, very encouraging. I consider him a mentor. Um, he relates with me as a friend, but he's a senior friend and a mentor. So very good friends uh, with my pastor, uh, Pastor Sam. In fact, uh, Pastor Agu, you know, we, we, the f my first time of meeting him, I think is now 15 years. 2005, I, I accompanied my pastor to London for Mandate Men Conference. He invited him to speak, and he asked me, God man, will you come along? And I said, why not? Yeah. It's London, after all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, I, and I remember getting into Jesus House uh, Mandate Men's Conference. Uh, the late Dr. Uh, Monroe was also speaking at that conference. It was also my first time of meeting him. Uh, and so many great people. But I was looking out for Pastor Agu, the way he conducted himself, uh, the way the conference went. And I left the place very inspired, and I told myself, this is the kind of person I would love to have a relationship with. Uh, <laughs> so fast forward 15 years now, I can say uh, that I have a good relationship with him. He speaks into my life. And it's always a pleasure to have him speak to our church uh, so that the blessings that I enjoy in private moment, you can have it in the public. Praise God. It's a man that needs no long introduction to many of us, but I will allow the video intro uh, to speak a little about him. Um, in, in accompanying him today is his beautiful wife. I'll leave the introduction to Pastor Agu. No man can talk about his wife like he would do. Yeah. I will also love to appreciate the presence of uh, his sister, whom he spoke about in the last service. Um, and he said if it's possible, we'll bring his uncle and everybody in the family here. Uh, but we also have uh, 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 Dr. Uh, Shaladi Agai here, who is a provincial pastor with RCCG in London, England, and also a uh, resident pastor at the Jesus House, London. Pastor Shala, it's really nice to have you here. Um, looking forward to a time where you also be a blessing to us in this house. Without further ado, uh, I'd love to uh, multimedia for you to roll the video intro, and then Pastor Agu will come up. Enjoy the service. Voted Britain's most inspirational black person by the Mayor's Office and the London Metro in 2012, Pastor Agu Iruku is a seasoned minister of the gospel who over decades has served in multiple capacities. He is the senior pastor of Jesus House for All Nations London, serves as the chairman of the executive council that oversees over 800 parishes of the redeemed Christian Church of God, is a special assistant to Pastor E.A. Adeboe, the general overseer of RCCG, and chairs the organizing team of the Festival of Life, the largest prayer gathering in Europe, which has an attendance of over 45,000 people at each event. He's a key member of One People Commission of the Evangelical Alliance, a body set up to fully integrate ethnic minority churches into the Evangelical Alliance, was recently appointed as one of the presidents of Churches Together in England alongside the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Cardinal of the Roman Catholic Church. He is the founder of Mandate Men's Ministries and the co-founder of the charity organization called Bright Futures for African Children, which he runs with his wife, Shola, through which they provide education and resources to children in poverty-stricken communities in Africa. Elevation Church, with a standing ovation, let's make welcome Pastor Agu Iruku. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Whilst you're standing, please remain standing. Um, I, I really want us to uh, give it up and celebrate uh, the one who really 
matters. Our King, our Lord, our Savior, our God, our Redeemer, our Rock, our Fortress. Go on, go on, celebrate Him. Celebrate Him for your life. Celebrate Him for your family. Father, we bless you. We honor you in this place, Heavenly Father. We just ask, oh God, that you take complete and absolute control, that you and you alone are glorified, Father. May our lives be transformed by this time that we're spending in your presence. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated in God's wonderful presence. It's a, a, a joy and a pleasure uh, to be here. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm traveling with um, my wife, uh, Shola. Uh, please appreciate her. She's an exceptional woman. Amen. My, uh, my sister, Chioma Sideso, please appreciate my sister. Um, our daughter will be in the third service. Um, um, she's, she's back home for youth corps, um, and she has chosen to make uh, Elevation Church her church here <laughs> while she's here. Um, I think it might be one of your expressions where she will be at. Um, also want us to appreciate uh, my friend and uh, we surf together and we've done so for the last 25 years. Um, Doc, we fondly call him Pastor Shola Adeka. Amen. Amen. And my pastoral aide, while I'm in Lagos, um, he kind of sorts me out here, uh, Pastor James Adoli. So please appreciate him as well. Amen. Praise God. You know, it's quite easy to be involved in a phenomenon without knowing. You can take it for granted. That tends to happen. And oftentimes it, it, it needs people to come from outside and to tell you that what you might be taking for granted, and, and not in a bad way, you're just kind of used to it. Uh, this is normal to you, is really not normal. Um, and what God is doing uh, with the Elevation Church and all the various outposts is not normal. And so we want to, we genuinely want to appreciate your pastors who Shola and I have a high regard for Pastor Godman and Pastor Bola for an amazing work. Go on, just appreciate them. Please show that you appreciate them, please. Please appreciate them. And you may be seated in God's wonderful presence. Of course, uh, the month of February um, all over the world is the month of love. And, and um, for me, it was heartwarming to hear that that was the theme for this month. Uh, love struck, love God, love your neighbor, love yourself. And the sub-theme sub for today or subtitle for today is uh, self-love versus selfishness. And we pray that by the end, the Lord will have done a work in our hearts to allow us to love like he loves. Amen? Genesis, the first chapter. Just a bit of a background. Uh, the Bible starts with those famous words, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But that wasn't God's intention. Um, God's intention is telegraphed further on in that same chapter. But before he arrives at his intention, he needed to create this environment that was right for what he had on his mind. And between uh, uh, that first verse and verse uh, 25, God goes about doing exactly that, that ordering his environment, creating the, the stars, creating the food, the vegetation. He creates an ordered environment. Every arrive 
at verse 26 where he states his intention. The Bible says, Genesis 1 verse 26, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, over everything that creeps on the earth. Verse 27, So God did what was his intention, what he said, let us do. He did in verse 27. So the Bible says, So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. This was God's masterpiece. This was where God was headed. Somehow, God, sitting in heaven in eternity past, had decided that he, the relationship he enjoyed with his son, Jesus Christ, he could multiply that relationship by creating other children of his Joint heirs, the Bible calls us with Jesus Christ. And he went ahead and did that. The Bible says he created us uh, in his image and his likeness. Uh, that means that we were a mirror of him. We were to look like him, not physically, because um, God is not a physical being, but certainly morally and spiritually. We were to have his DNA in us. Uh, in a sense, if you saw us, you would have seen a part of God because there was a part of the divinity, of the divine that was placed in us. We were made in his image and his likeness. And the Bible tells us in 1 John 4 verse 8, 1 John 4 verse 8, that God is love. And so if it says we are made in his image and his likeness, then it means that we are made in the image and likeness of love. And if that is correct, then it means that if God is love and we are made in his image and likeness, then it follows that we also are love. If you encounter love any which way you encounter God, it should follow that those made in his image and likeness would be like him. An encounter with any one of us would be an encounter with love. Because you see, love was not a part of God. It wasn't an expression of God. It was who God was. God is incapable of doing anything outside his person, and his person is love. Every response that God makes is a response that comes from his core person, and his core person is love. And if we're made in his image and his likeness, then we are like God, and then we also are love. An encounter with us is an encounter with love. And this was the perfect, the ideal that existed in the Garden of Eden. Adam made in the image and likeness of God, expressing his love which he received from God to the only other person who existed, Eve, and vice versa, she expressing her love to him. Because we draw our source from God. We are made in his image and likeness. We receive love from him. And that love we receive from him makes us whole so that we also give out the same. Because we receive it from him. Now this was the ideal environment that existed in Eden. But then as we know by the time we arrive at the third chapter of the book of Genesis... There was our adversary, our foe, that, 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 wise, that, that old wicked foe of ours called Satan. Now we all know that he had a grouse with God. His grouse with God was that at one time he was the cherub, the archangel that, that led worship in heaven. But then sin entered his heart and there's no way that sin could stay in heaven. So... Because he's in his heart, he thought to himself that I will be like God. A rebel the rebellion entered his heart. Sin entered his heart. The instruction from God was to Archangel Michael to get him out of heaven. Please, we must never think that God and Satan are opposites and equals. There is God and God far above. And they are created beings of which Satan is one. And when it came to time to deal with Satan, God couldn't 
couldn't come down from where he was to deal with him himself, God sent Michael to go and deal with him. We know the story. Michael deals with him and, and we are told a third of the angels in heaven, nobody knows whether it's really a third, but a significant number of the angels in heaven who rebelled with him were cast out of heaven. Of course, they were cast down to the earth and it's interesting that in Eden, Satan already existed. But Satan was irrelevant as long as man's relationship with God was perfect. And so our focus is not on what Satan did or what Satan didn't do. Our focus is on God because if we get it right with God, Satan is not as relevant as we make him in life. Amen? And I guess they're seething with anger and watching this wonderful love relationship between the children of God and God who received this love from God and gave out in equal measure to each other the love that they received. He hatched a plan for he knew that the source of this love from God, the outpouring of it was from the heart of man or the heart of woman. And he knew that if he could introduce sin into the heart of man, that perfect relationship where man received the love that made man, confirmed man's wholeness, confirmed man's identity as a child of God, confirmed man's identity as love itself, and that allowed man to give or woman to give and to receive from each other. He knew that if he could introduce sin, the nature of sin is that it will mar and it will spoil that which is good. And so, you know the rest of the story. He gets into a serpent. He comes to the woman. He engages her in a conversation. Did God say? The woman says, yes, God said, but just this one tree we are not supposed to eat. He introduces the thought to her that perchance God is trying to stop her from becoming the fullness of who she, could, who she could become. His words to her, you will be like God. How many know that? At that point in time, the woman's response should have been, I am already like God because I'm made in the image and likeness of God. But that wasn't her response. And you know the rest of the story. She eats the fruit in, 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 in rebellion and then gives the man the fruit to eat in rebellion, and sin enters this perfect idyllic world where love was freely received and freely shared. And as a result of that singular act, this beautiful environment is shattered. The result of that is that negative emotions which hitherto never existed as suddenly introduced into the heart of man and the heart of woman. Their relationship with God is severed. So they cannot receive the love of God as they used to. And as a result, they can't give what they don't have. They are thrown from the light of love into the darkness of a of a warped perception of love that turns their focus from the sacrificial love, the giving love, the compassionate love, the kind love, the merciful love into a selfish kind of love in inverted commas where the focus is not the other person but the focus is now themselves. And with that darkness comes a whole slew of negative emotions. There comes of course, the most obvious the shame that is expressed immediately, sin is introduced. They suddenly realize that they are naked, the Bible says, and they become ashamed as a result. And it's a whole host of other emotions that are introduced. Hatred and anger and bitterness and strife and of course, selfishness. From being a people who served each other in love, who received this love from God that made them wholesome, 
A love that humbled them that they, sh that they could be receiving that kind of love. From being the people who, whose heart was so right so that they could give from their heart. They suddenly found themselves at a place where they could no longer do so. In the New Testament, the Lord Jesus says concerning our love relationship with God and with each other. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verses 37 to 40. You shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandment, commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This is really what our faith is about. All these rules and regulations hinge on two things. That we love God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. And the, the second flows from it, that we love our neighbors as ourselves. The challenge, however, was that with the attack of the enemy on the heart of man, man didn't really have all his heart to love with. Man didn't really have all his soul to love with. Man didn't really have all his mind to love with. And if man couldn't love God with all his heart, all his soul, all his mind, Man certainly couldn't receive from God because the heart of man was now marred by sin, the love of God, and man certainly couldn't give out what he didn't have. And as you well know, that state of affairs just simply got worse and worse and worse to a point where it was so bad that God himself declared in Genesis the 6th chapter and the 5th verse. The Bible says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The heart of man, marred by sin, was simply incapable of giving love. Because you see, the kind of love that was required was not a love that you can will or you can force. It was a love that could only come from God. And it is what we received from God that we gave out. And if our hearts were so marred by sin that we couldn't receive from God, then we simply were incapable of giving out. And the darkness of man's heart got progressively worse. The prophet Jeremiah describes it like this in Jeremiah 17 verse 9. He says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, who can know it? That's the state of man's heart. Wickedness thrived. Evil thrived. People stabbed themselves in the, in the back. Fathers abused their children. Husbands physically abused, mentally abused their wives. Children rebelled against their parents. Friends betrayed friends and the world now developed a counterfeit type of love that focused on self and had no resemblance with the love of God that was so evident in the Garden of Eden. But thank God that God had a plan. Thank God that God didn't leave us because if God had left us, believe me, you and I won't want to live in this world. Because the heart of man would have got progressively wicked. And if you don't know how wicked the heart of man is, all you have to do is sit in front of a television and watch the news channel. You will hear of people who traffic in other human beings. They've lost the whole concept of love. They don't, they don't realize that this is the image of God that they are trafficking in. You'll hear about people who abuse children. They have no idea that this is the image of God they're abusing. That love that would have protected has left their hearts. You'll see the breakdown in the institution of marriage. You'll see a husband who will physically abuse his wife. He has no concept of love. He doesn't realize that his role there is to show love to this, to this wife that God has given him and help her become who she should become. 
You'll see wives who will cheat on husbands. She has no concept of love. She doesn't understand that love is a commitment, irrespective of whatever happens. And I can go on and on. The tragedy of a girl who should first know uh, the love of a father from her natural father, and yet the natural father abuses her physically. I'm sure you know that's a sick mind. It's a warped mind. He has no concept of love. The tragedy of someone who is in a father-son or father-daughter relationship. Not necessarily a natural father, but a father figure. And as a result of that father figure abusing his position, that person now has a warped concept of the father figure. Because that father figure, his heart is so darkened that he cannot show the love of God. Because he can't receive, you can't give what you haven't received. And that's the state that the world found itself in. But thank God that God had a recovery plan. And that recovery, recovery plan is the person of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world, again his core nature. John 3 verse 16, that he gave his one and only son. The Passion Translation says his unique son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in him will never perish, but experience everlasting life. There was no way that God could not be himself. We had become his enemies. We had turned away from him. We had rebelled against him. We were doing things that were an abomination to him. But because his core nature was love, he still kept on loving and demonstrated his love to us in the singular act of sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. Can someone say amen? amen. 1 John, 1 John 4 verse 7. The Bible says, Then those who are loved by God, those who are loved by God, let his love continually pour from you to one another because God is love. Everyone who loves is fathered by God and experiences an intimate knowledge of him. The one who doesn't love has yet to know God, for God is love. The light of God's love shined within us when he sent his matchless son into the world so that we might live through him. This is love. He loved us long before we loved him. It was his love, not ours. He proved it by sending his son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take our sins away. And what was all that about? It was by, about regaining our identity, which we lost at the fall, about becoming who we are. Salvation is not just about going to heaven. No, we are redeemed to an original state, to start to exist here on earth in the state that we were designed originally to exist. And we were designed originally to exist as carriers of God's love. Not an adulterated, perverted, selfish love, but a selfless love that is an example and a mirror of the love that God had for us. A sacrificial love that gives to the other person, thinks of the other person. A compassionate love that goes out of its way for the other person. A merciful love that's so willing to show mercy. A giving love that's so willing to give. That's who we are. And so Jesus came to restore our identity to us. So in Christ, we should be saying, aha, that's exactly who I am. This person is not who I am. That person is the result of a, of a malfunctioning heart, a dysfunctional heart, a wounded heart. A heart that has been wounded by the enemy using life circumstances oftentimes. And Jesus came to heal that heart. For as the wise king makes claim in, in Proverbs 4 verse 23, guard our hearts with diligence is his instruction because out of our hearts flow the issues of life. Can someone say amen? amen. And how do we bring this about? Because you see, it is not just I answered an altar call. Answering an altar call never changed anybody's heart. It changes a person's spirit so all things are passed away, but believe me, 90% of the time, if you come out and you're beating your wife, you will probably live here saved and beat her at home. So what changes our lives? Romans, the 12th chapter, 
and the second verse. The King James Version would say, the New King James would say, and do not be conformed to this world. And that is exactly what has happened. A com we're conformed, shaped by a culture. We read all these magazines, seven ways to love. Three ways to love. Love your wife to distraction. The Father's way to love. And all these things are written by people who have no idea of God's love. And a lot of the love that they're telling us to love with is a selfish love. Because that's all the world can give you, a selfish love. The world tells you it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Mothers tell their daughters, you have to be careful with men. Men are like this. Children are brought up to protect themselves against this world out there. And as long as we grow in that, we grow in a parody of love, in, a, in an adulterated love, in a perverted love. But then the word of God was given to us. So as the Bible says, we are not conformed, but we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. And so we begin to realize that, hang on a second, this isn't love. This is love. The love of God that we find in the word of God is sacrificial, is giving, is merciful, is compassionate, is kind, is thoughtful. And as we stay in the word of God, by the spirit of God, we begin to move into what is God's good, perfect, and acceptable will. The Passion Translation says, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. So it's Valentine's Day. But we don't do Valentine's the way the world does Valentine's. Of course we celebrate love. Why shouldn't we? But we celebrate, celebrate a God kind of love. A love that allowed the father for the love of his other children to sacrifice his only son on the cross so that he can get his other children back into a love relationship with him. We celebrate a love that is given. So if a husband understands it, he knows that the kind of love I have for my wife is the kind of love where I sacrifice so that she can have. If a son knows that, a son knows that the kind of love I have for my father is a love that is not abusive or manipulative. A wife knows that the kind of love I have for my husband is a protective, protective love. It's a merciful love that sees his flaws but doesn't focus on his flaws but focuses on the things that are good about him to encourage him to overcome his flaws. And as the Bible says in Romans 5 verse 5, this hope is not a disappointing fantasy. It's not a fantasy. Because we can now experience in the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. It's only the Holy Spirit that can bring that love of God into our hearts. And you know, as I end, religion is a terrible thing. Because religion makes us think that we can be in God but not be forced to confront his love. With religion, if we tick certain boxes, we can tell ourselves we are okay. But with a relationship with Christ, you have to confront that love. On a daily basis, that love questions you. If God did this for you, what are you going to do for others? And as I end... My heart genuinely goes out to a lot of us because the truth is that you can't give what you don't have. The world has shaped us. Circumstances have molded us. We're asked to give love from our hearts, but a lot of our hearts 
are so wounded and so mad. How can you tell a girl who has been physically abused by her father that she should trust another father, even her heavenly father? She can be born again, but she will find it challenging to open up her heart because the father she knows abused her. How do you tell a man who all his growing up years longed to hear his father say, well done. And ladies, you don't know what it means for a man to crave for the father's admiration. I lived most of my adult life trying to get my father to acknowledge that what I was doing was okay. And every time I got near, he moved the goalpost. So I just never seemed, and I, it wasn't until I was delivered, and I realized that I don't need him to validate what I'm doing. If God validates it, then he'll validate it. And guess what? As soon as I took my eyes away from him, he's the one now chasing me all over the place. How do you tell someone who has been through three or four broken relationships to open her heart to love again? The last time she did it, her heart was shattered to pieces. How do you tell someone who has a close friend who they confided in and that close friend betrayed them? Their heart is shattered. The only, thing, the only person who can mend it that I know, not a doctor, not a psychiatrist, but the Spirit of God and the blood of Jesus. Maybe you're one of those people. We can talk about self-love. That means love others as much as you love yourself. But when you don't love yourself because of the wounds in your heart, you can't love anybody. It's an illusion. So maybe you're that person. I pray the Lord will minister to you now. As my spiritual daughter, Ariola, sings these songs, just open up your heart and just think of the price God paid with a love that was completely reckless. Still young. 
You know, there's nothing he won't do. No shadow he won't light up. Go on. Coming after me, you know, never ending, reckless love of God. Leaves the ninety nine, nobody can earn it, nobody deserves it. Now, if you just listen, listen, listen to me, listen carefully. As we waited on God for this service, God told me in my heart that he was going to do a healing work in the hearts of people. And so, it might just be two or three of you, I'm not sure how many, but you know, as I spoke, that your heart is wounded. That there are wounds in your heart that are stopping you from receiving the fullness of God's love. In your head, you've received it, but in your heart, because of life's circumstances, life's issues, because of what you've been through, there are wounds in your heart, sadly inflicted by probably the negligence, carelessness, irresponsibility, or wickedness of some other person. If you're here, I want you to come forward very quickly. We don't have much time. We have just about six minutes. So come forward very quickly from where you are. And as you come, I realize going to min is going to sing about the Father, the Father's love for you. So just come from where you are very quickly. Come, 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 come very quickly, very quickly. If you're up in the gallery, come down very quickly. He calls me his own. Come, come. If you can move forward, just so more people come. Those of you up front, move forward, move forward, so more people can come. Listen to these words. You're not an orphan. You're not desolate. You have a father. On your heart is wounded, and you want God to heal your heart today. each tear that falls and hears me when I call the devil is a liar go on declare I have a father go on I have a father he calls me his own He'll never leave No matter where He knows your name He knows He knows you by your name He knows your everything 
precedes each tear that falls and hears me when he knows your name you're not a statistic he knows your he knows your every thought he knows your every he sees each tear that falls he sees each tear and he hears yes you when you call now we're trusting the lord for a quick work here the truth is that most of you are up front because someone who should have been like a father to you in one way or another let you down someone who should have shown you love showed you the opposite and so the first thing i want you to do because god wants to do a healing work in your heart this morning is i want you to forgive that person and i don't want you to think it in your mind i want you to verbalize it i want you to call that person's name and release that person by the spirit of god go on just 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 call that person's name and and receive the grace of god to release that person because that is stopping what God wants to do in your heart. Go on, just talk to God. Release that person. Say, Father, I just release him. I release him from the pain, from the disappointment. It might be more than one person. From, from the way I was treated, from what was said to me, from the way my heart was wounded, I release that person. I release that person. Father, we thank you. Sweet Holy Spirit, please come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Go on, if you're up front, put your hand on your heart. We're just going to trust the Spirit of God to do that operation that only him can do where he reaches into your heart and begins to mend and massage and correct and we're saying lord don't just remove wounds remove scars so that the hearts are as good as new father we bring before you these your children by your spirit, the love of God can cascade into our hearts and bring about a renewal in our hearts. I pray, Lord, for the many different circumstances that are before you. You know each one, Heavenly Father. Nothing is hidden from you. And these, your children, Father, have been hindered and handicapped in this race of life. Unable to fully receive your love, and unable to give father as a result trapped in an adulterated perverted type of selfish love but Lord not because of their own making but because they were seeking to protect themselves and so Heavenly Father by your spirit we're asking that you will do a supernatural work in their hearts they leave this place oh God made whole again for Lord Jesus, you came for the brokenhearted, the wounded in, uh, in, in hearts. And Lord, these are my brothers and my sisters, your children. Lord, do an amazing work. And let their story become a testimony for somebody else, Father. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We give you all the praise and glory. I declare each one of them healed, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Rise to your feet. Amen. Amen. Rise to your feet. Now, God has done a work in your heart. There's a working out. There's a walking out of it. And you know, this is a great church. They have loads of counselors, you know, pastors, 
leadership. You know, don't stay where you are. You know, as you live here, walk away and walk out of it. The Lord has healed your heart. There are no longer any wounds in your heart. In Jesus' name. Give God a clap offering. Go on. As you go back to your seats, give God a clap offering. Give God a clap offering. Good, good father, it's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to One more time, you're perfect. You're perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. As I end, if you can just bow your heads. There might be someone here, someone who's watching online. You haven't accepted this love of this Father that we've spoken about. It's a free gift, but you've got to accept it into your heart. And you might ask me, what do I mean by that? He wants you in his family, but you haven't accepted to come into his family. You haven't accepted him as father. You haven't accepted his son as your Lord and Savior. He showed his own love by sending his son to die for you, but you've spurned the gift. You haven't received the gift. With all heads bowed, if there's one person who is saying, I want to settle it in my heart that God is my father. And that I receive the gift of his son, Jesus. If you would slip your hand up wherever you are, I would love to pray with you. You want to give your life to Jesus. You're in this hall. You're online. Slip your hand up wherever you are. Anybody saying, please pray for me. I just want to settle this issue of him being my father. Anybody slip your hand up wherever you are. Anybody saying, please pray for me. Once I see the hand, you can put it down. Anybody? I see that hand. Keep it up for a second. Keep it up for a second. Anybody else? Uh, I see that hand on my left. Anybody else? Go on, slip that, slip that hand up. Anybody else? Do I, do I? If you can, if wherever you are, I would love to make contact with you and pray with you. Rise to your feet wherever you are. Rise to your feet. You, 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 you want to settle this issue of God being your father. Rise. God bless you. Rise. Wherever you are, rise. Anybody else? Rise. God bless you. Rise at the back. God bless you. Anybody else? You want to settle this. You don't want to live here with this issue in doubt that God is my father. You want to accept him and accept his son wherever you are. Just keep standing for a second. Yes, sir. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Hallelujah. If you're standing, I wanted to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself. I need a savior. So Jesus, son of the living God, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. 
from this moment on. I willingly, totally, completely, absolutely surrendered my life to you. Fill my heart with your spirit and give me a new beginning. Thank you for accepting me. If you just said those words after me, can you move to the heart that is closest to you? Can you just move to the heart that is closest to you? Just move to the heart that is closest to you. Quickly, we have our, our counselors there. They just want to spend like five minutes of your time with you. If you move to the heart that is closest to you, if you're on the gallery, on the main floor, just move to the heart that is closest to you and follow the counselors. We'll have to just spend a few minutes with you and you'll be back with us in the service. Uh, can you help me appreciate everyone who made a decision for Jesus this morning? It takes courage and boldness to make that decision. Come on, somebody, appreciate them. Appreciate them. And wasn't that a word? Wasn't that a word? Would you appreciate with me? Pastor Hardway Roko for sowing in our hearts such great seed of God's word today, steering us uh, to steer ourselves to embrace the love of God, which is our true nature. 